Okay. Well, how did we get here? We're using our imagination. Oh. <laughs> so these must be the Israelites. Yep. Why are they out here in the middle of nowhere? Oh, -ho! now that is a good question. Have you ever heard of a guy named Moses? Isn't he the one who parted the Red Sea? Right again. But we're going to go back a little further. The Israelites were living in Egypt, but not because they wanted to. No, the Egyptians had taken them captive and were making them work very hard as their slaves. Oh, dear. It was miserable. But God cared about the Israelites, so he sent Moses to lead them out of Egypt and into their own land, the Promised Land. The promised land? No, 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 no. Oh, the land God promised them was wonderful. You could grow things and there was lots of food. No, this is the desert. So why are they here? Ah, yes, that is the point. When Moses and the Israelites left Egypt, all they had to do was follow God's directions and they'd go right to the promised land. But uh, they didn't always follow God's directions. Sometimes they went their own way instead. What do you mean? Well, for example, Moses led them to the promised land right away. But when some of the Israelites took a look around, they saw people there that looked like giants. That scared them so much, they wouldn't go in. They got to the land God promised them, and then they turned around and ran away. Now, God was very disappointed in the Israelites for not following his directions, so he told them that none of them could go into the Promised Land for 40 years. You're kidding me. Nope. That's why they're stuck here in the desert. Wow. By the time 40 years had gone by, Moses had died. I thought this story was about him. No, it's about Joshua. Joshua? Who's he? Well, he was Moses' helper. When Moses died, Joshua became Israel's new leader. Do I know you? I'm the narrator. Oh. The Israelites were very sad about Moses dying because he was a great leader. But at last, it was finally time. It's time? It's time? Did he just say it's time? We didn't have a lot of fun in the desert. We didn't have a lot of fun in the Saddle up your cow and go behind us now Because we're going to the promised land For years I've eaten nothing but manna A dish that is filling but bland But now we're on our way I'll have a taste and Because we're going to the promised land And in the promised land it's gonna be so grand We'll have our fill from the grill as much as we can stand It'll be so great oh we can hardly wait Because we're going to the promised land the dining was losing with Moses, but we'll be feasting with Josh in command. I'd like a taco, please, and some panos and cheese. Because we're going to the promised land. And in the promised land, it's gonna be so grand. We'll have our fill from the grill as much as we can stand. It'll be so great, but well, we can hardly wait. Cause we're going to the promised land. And in the promised land, it's gonna be so grand. We'll have our fill from the grill as much as we can stand. Cause we're going to the promised land. Yeah, we're going to the promised land. Cause we're going to the promised land. So off they went. After 40 years, the Israelites were finally going to their new home. With a big grin, Joshua led his people into the promised land. Unfortunately, he overlooked one little detail. Jericho. Did you hear something, Jean Claude? Mais oui, Philippe. I think someone has bumped our wall. Who are you? Who are we? I think we should ask, who are you? Oh, um, I am Joshua. 
And these are the children of Israel. Oh, hello, children. Hi. It was nice to meet you. Now go away. Yes. <clears throat> no, you don't understand. God has given us this land for our new home. So, well, you're going to have to leave. Oh, did you hear that, Jean-Claude? The little big hand says we have to leave. I'm a cucumber. <laughs> that is hilarious. <clears throat> Let me point something out to you, Dicker. We have a wall. You do not. If anyone is to be doing the leaving, it will be you. That is right. Now listen to me. Our God said that this land was ours and that all we had to do was follow his directions. So, I'm afraid, if you don't come out, we're gonna have to come in there after you. <laughs> I'd like to see you try. You can never get over a giant wall, tiny bigger. Yes, tiny bigger. You are not a mighty deer. You are just a baby gherkin. I'm a cucumber. <laughs> oh, ooh, my slushy. Maybe we should fall back and regroup. <laughs> Please, you cowards! I you know. may have your guns, but we have our war! <laughs> Things weren't going as smoothly as Joshua had hoped, so the Israelites decided to pull back and talk things over. That's a big wall. This time, I really mean it. We should go back to Egypt. Huh? huh? Don't you remember? Snorkeling in the Nile, three square meals a day, plenty of exercise. Oh, it was paradise. We were in slavery. Nothing is perfect. Listen, kids, that land is rightfully ours. And the only way we're going to get it is by taking out that wall. Right, Jerry? Uh, yeah, that, that's right, Jimmy. So Jerry and I are going to put our heads together and come up with a plan to take out the wall. Yeah. They are so aggressive. Well, Joshua didn't know what to do, and he could see that things were getting a little out of control. Where did we put that chemistry set? Is Egypt north or south? Then he remembered that whenever Moses didn't know what to do, he would go and talk to God. How did he do that? Well, Moses found the best way was to go off by himself and just listen. I'll be right back. So Josh went away from the camp to see if he could hear God. After he had gone a ways, he saw a strange man with a sword. Whoa! Josh wondered whether this guy was on his side or on Jericho's side. Are you for us or for our enemies? Neither. But as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. Well, Josh realized that this was a messenger from God, so he immediately fell face down on the ground in reverence. I'm sorry, I couldn't make that out. I said, what message does my lord have for his servant? Oh, really? That's what you said? Yes, that's what I said. Oh, all right. I come with directions from the lord. Great. What are they? Ah, yes. Ahem. The Lord says to you, Joshua, see, I have delivered Jericho into your hands. March around the city once with all your men. Do this each day for six days. Have seven priests carry trumpets of ram's horns in front of the ark. On the seventh day, march around the city seven times with the priests blowing the trumpets. When you hear them sound a long blast, have all the people give a loud shout and the walls of the city will collapse and Jericho will be yours. Well, have fun. Those 
those were very interesting directions. They sure were. Josh went back to camp and told the plan to the rest of the Israelites. And the wall of the city will collapse, and Jericho will be yours. They thought it was interesting, too. So, we're supposed to hop around the city for seven days, blow our little horns, yell, and the walls are just gonna fall down. Yep, those are God's directions. Well, I'm sure that would work great if the walls were made out of jello. Ooh, then we could eat them. Last call for Egypt. Who's coming with me? Just a minute. I think you'll find our plan a bit more sophisticated. Blowing the horns in the desert isn't gonna do it. What we need is serious firepower. Sherry the Curtain! are we clapping? I have no idea. This is terrible! It looks like they're gonna ignore God's directions again! Shh! Josh has something to say. Um, I think we're forgetting something. Ahem. The Lord has given this land to us no need to fuss, he knows what he's doing. We know that he will take care of us if we will follow him. Now everyone, sing together. The Lord has given this land to us. No need to fuss, he knows what he's doing. We know. I think we should try doing it God's way first. Well, God's way still sounded kind of funny, but the Israelites agreed to give it a try. And the next morning, there they were, marching around Jericho. It wasn't long before the people of Jericho noticed the Israelites. What are you doing? We're going to knock your wall down. By walking around in circles? Yes. It's not because we're crazy or anything. Our God told us to do it this way. Oh, that's a great idea. You go ahead and keep walking. Keep walking. But you will knock down our wall. Keep walking. But she isn't gonna fall. It's plain to see. Our brains are very small to think walking. We'll be knocking down our wall. You silly little pickle. You silly little bees. You think that walking around will bring this city to its knees? The awesome powers of this wall we've clearly demonstrated. Ah! But out here in the hot, hot sun, perhaps you're dehydrated? Ah, pity them, Philip. Ah! May we, Jean Claude, may we? Won't you join me in my irritating little song? It would be an honor. Keep walking, but you will knock down our wall. Keep walking, <laughs> but she isn't gonna fall. It's plain to see your brains are very small to see walking. We'll be knocking down our wall. Keep walking, <laughs> but you will knock down our wall. <laughs> Keep walking. But she isn't gonna fall It's plain to see Your brains are very small So keep walking We'll be knocking down our walls It's plain to see Your brains are very small To keep walking We'll be knocking down our walls <laughs> <laughs> All right, boys Let them have it
double time! Well, it wasn't a pretty sight, but the Israelites did make it all the way around Jericho. Back at their camp that night, they talked it over. Well, um, that, that could have been a lot worse. We made it all the way around, so, um, we only have to do this six more days, and that, that'll take care of it. Well, what do you think? I've got slushy in my ear. Well, um... Time to fire up the Luminator, Jerry! Um, do you think that's a good idea? Who wants to see the pyramids? I'm organizing a tour. No, wait. Things were really falling apart this time. Josh needed to do something, and quick. Junior? Wait! Don't you see what you're doing? God gave you directions and you're ignoring them. Don't you remember what happened when you're supposed to go into the promised land, but you got scared and ran away instead? Because you didn't follow God's directions, you had to stay in the desert for 40 years. Well, yeah, but that was... I know God's directions don't always make sense to us, but things work out a lot better when we do them God's way instead of trying to do things our own way. It didn't make sense when God told you to walk right through the Red Sea. But what happened? The water dried up. And it didn't make sense when God told you to live in the desert even though there's no food in the desert. But what happened? God gave you manna to eat. Don't you see? Sometimes God asks us to do things that don't make sense to us. Like walking around the city to make the walls fall down. Or being nice to someone who hasn't been nice to us. But when we remember that God made us and loves us and always wants what's best for us, we can be sure that His way is the best way. The Lord has given this land to us, nor need to fuss. He knows what He's doing. We know that He will take care of us if we will fall. to march around Jericho. Now, God never said it would be easy. No, the people in Jericho hit him with everything they had. Fire! Run! Fire! Dear! But the Israelites remembered that they were following God's directions, and they kept on marching. Six days they marched, and nothing could stop them. On the seventh day, just like God had told them, they marched around Jericho seven times while the priests blew their horns. And just like God said, when they finished marching, the priests blew one long blast and then all the people yelled.
His name was George. King George. Um, King George, uh, your highness, do you think you'll be coming out anytime soon? We have important business to discuss. What do you think, Ducky? Oh, I couldn't agree more. Uh, not right now, Lewis. We're not finished with our royal bath. <laughs> it's quite important, sir. Oh, Ducky, why can't they just leave us alone? Yes, it was a little odd. You see, the kingdom was at war. The Great Pie War, to be exact. And usually, when a kingdom was at war, the king would, uh, help. It'll have to wait, Louis. First things first. Right, Ducky? King George loved to take baths. But most of all, King George loved his rubber ducky. Some kings love horses. And some kings love cattle. Some kings love leading their troops into battle. But me, I'm not like that. I find that stuff yucky. I'd much rather stay in my cub with my ducky. Because I love my duck. Uh, sir, if I could have a minute. Love my duck. There are some things we must discuss. I love my duck. See, there's a war and wealth, we're in it. Love my duck. Oh, I don't mean to make a fuss. Then don't. Sing with me, Lewis. Huh? Oh, uh, okay. <clears throat> because he loves his duck. And that is why I can't be bothered. Loves his duck. With a particular the boar. He loves his duck. Cause quite unlike my dear old father. Loves his duck. I find it all a bore. Now concentrate, dear Lewis. And I think you will agree. The most important person in the whole wide world is me. So please don't drag me down with all the people and their troubles. Go run some water in my tub to freshen up my bubbles. Oh boy. Because I love my duck. I don't know why I even bother. Love my duck. You just can't reason with this guy. Because I love my duck. duck. It's time to face the facts. I think we're all a little stuck. So let's 
the army run on my I fear the kingdom's out of luck because I lost my duck. Yes, undoubtedly we're stuck. So let the army run on my Oh boy, we're really out of luck because I lost my Hey, what's that? Give me a quarter. Because I love my duck, you're always there to make me smile. I love my duck, you're my very favorite toy. <laughs> It's beautiful. I want it. What? The house? No, the ducky. Oh, uh, but you already have a ducky. What are you saying? That I shouldn't have whatever I want? Well, I must have it, I must get it. You must go and get it for me. If you want me to be happy, then you'll show me you adore me. Don't rest another minute till it's sitting here before me. If you want to do your best, I would suggest you go and bring me back that duck. But sir, if I could just jog your memory, you already have quite a few duckies. Those are yesterday's duckies. Huh? Well, these are all perfectly good duckies. Why, most of your loyal subjects would love to have even one ducky this nice. I don't like these, I don't need these, I don't want these any longer. My affection for those duckies isn't getting any stronger. To say I can't have what I want, you couldn't be more wronger. Don't ask me to explain, there will be pain if you don't go and get that duck. Our conversation is over. Did you say wronger? What? I don't know. Perhaps. It's more wrong, not more wronger. <laughs> it had to rhyme. Don't question a king's grammar. Now go and get that duck. But King George, we can't just barge in and take Thomas's duck. Why not? Well, he'll tell people, and then everyone will think you're going to come in and take their stuff. You can't run a kingdom that way. No, all right. Well, then we'll have to do something about Thomas. What? Come in! Ah, Frederick, my favorite general. How goes the war? As Lewis has told you, the pie war has grown ferocious. We need more men at the front. Lewis didn't tell me that. I was trying to, but you wouldn't come out of the... Hmm. More men, eh? Yes, we need more men. You know, I believe Thomas would like to help. Thomas? He's rather small. He's surprisingly strong for his size. As you wish, sire. Your Highness! And one more thing, Cedric. Put Thomas at the front of the battle. Then have everyone else step back. But he'll be creamed. Your king has spoken. As you wish, sire. Lewis, meet me at dusk at the east gate. We've got a little job to do. It was terrible. Lewis didn't want Thomas to get hurt, and he certainly didn't want to take his ducky. 
but he also didn't want King George to send him to the Pie War too. So he did what the king asked. Follow me, and try to act inconspicuous. Let's have a look at it. It looks just like your other duckies. What? Hold your tongue, infidel! This is the most perfect ducky the world has ever known! It's time for a bath! <gasps> Who could that be? Come in! Thomas! Yes, Thomas! Back so soon? It was astounding! There he was, alone at the front line! But he never gave up! He stood his ground! And this little fellow single-handedly stopped the advancing horde! He did? He's a war hero, sire! Yes. Well, Thomas, I, uh... Incoming! Boys and Barry at three o'clock! I'm sorry. I'm afraid he's lost his mind, sire. The trauma of war. Oh, no. Well, how long will he be like this? No telling. Perhaps the rest of his life. Yeah? Well, we will give him the highest honor of the kingdom. Yes, sire. If he were conscious, I'm sure he would thank you. I'll take him to his room now. Thank you, Cedric. Now, finally, I can take that bath. Oh, I feel just terrible. Oh, that's all right. I still have time for my bath. What? Are you the only one you think about? No. I've been thinking about this ducky for quite some time now. Since Thomas has lost his marbles, he won't be needing it. So come on, help me out with that bath. Oh, great. Come in. I did. I see. And who are you? You remember me. I am Melvin, that slightly odd wise man who shows up every so often to tell you things. Ah, yes. Well, what is it? I have to tell you a little story. Not now. I'm gonna go take a bath. Come back at bedtime. It's important. Oh, okay. What's that? It's a flannel graph to illustrate. Ooh, flannel graph. There once was a man, a very rich man. He had a lot of sheep, he had a lot of land. He threw a lot of parties, he was dapper, he was tan. Yes, there once was a very rich man. Okay, great story. I'll uh, see you next time. I Wait just a minute, my story isn't done. It's about two men and I've only mentioned one. Oh. There once was a man, a very poor man. He had next to nothing. 
just a little lamb, but he loved it like a son, and he fed it from his hand. Yes, there once was a very poor man. Then one day, there was a guest at the house of the rich man. What did he do? Have you guessed to feed the guest of the rich man? Well, let's see. He had plenty of sheep, so he could just share one of his sheep. Not a problem. He took the lamb of the poor man. He took the lamb of the poor man. The rich man took to feed his guest the very, very poor man's lamb. What? Is, is, that a, is that the true story? As surely as I stand before you today, my story is true. Who is that man? Tell me. To take the lamb of the poor man. When he had lots of sheep of the poor man, only he had one. Man! For his cruelty, he will spend the rest of his days locked in my dungeon. Who is he? Oh, King George, you are that man. What? You are the king. You have many duckies, but Thomas only had one, and he loved it very much. But you weren't thinking about Thomas, you were only thinking about yourself and what you wanted. But I... I... Your Highness, what you have done has made God very unhappy. For whether you are a king or just a kid, God wants us all to think of others first. You have been selfish, King George. And when we are selfish, we hurt the people around us, just as you have hurt Thomas. I... God wants us to love our neighbors, not hurt them. What do I do? What do I do? Here is what you must do. Ask God to forgive you. Ask Thomas to forgive you. And then... Yes? Make it right. Well, King George knew exactly what to do. Lewis, draw a bath! What? Trust me. Okay. I gotta find Thomas. He figured a nice hot bath in the royal tub would help Thomas. Hello? Here, let's clean you up a little. And sure enough, he was right. Hey, where am I? Wow, big tub. Am I in heaven? No, silly. It's just my bathtub. I've got something for you. My ducky! King George told Thomas what he had done and asked Thomas if he could forgive him. After thinking it over a bit, Thomas said yes. Then King George prayed and asked God to forgive him too. Yes, sir, being forgiven felt really great. And the people he had hurt, Thomas and even Lewis, by making him do things Lewis knew were wrong, felt much better once they knew King George was really sorry. Yep, it was a happy day. So, King George, what'd you learn today? What I learned? Let me tell you. Today, I learned that being selfish doesn't pay. I tried it just the other day. I wanted to be happy. I thought it was the way, but it weren't. I think you mean wasn't. It wasn't the way. Well, now I know just what to do. Before I think about me, I better think about you. So send a message out to every boy and girl. There's no better way to make a really yucky world. The 
and being selfish. Selfish, ooh, it doesn't pay. I tried it, you tried it just the other day. Uh -huh. I wanted to be happy, you thought it was the way, but it worked. Work, work, work. Uh, wait, wait a minute. No, it worked. Work, was it? Work, it, work, it, it, it should work, be. No, it worked. King George. Work, work, it work, work, wasn't. Work, work, no, it worked. Was, work, it was work, not. Work, wasn't. Now Dave lived in a land called Israel a long, long time ago. So long ago that there weren't any cars or telephones or vacuum cleaners or anything. There were mostly just sheep, especially around Dave's house, because Dave was a shepherd. No, no, that's not him. That's one of his brothers. Nope, another brother. Uh, nope, uh, another brother. Dave had a lot of brothers. Aha, uh -huh, there he is. Uh, no, not the sheep, he's behind the sheep. Uh, shoo there, Fluffy. Hi, I'm Dave. I have a lot of brothers. Yep, seven to be exact. Now Dave and his brothers spent most of their time in the fields taking care of their sheep, which could be hard work because their sheep had an unusual problem. They tip over. Oh look, there goes one now. But Dave had an even bigger problem. You see, of all the brothers, he was the smallest. That's right, everybody's bigger than I am. And sometimes his big brothers would pick on him. Oh, Dave, one of my sheep fell over. Would you come pick it up for me? I'm kind of busy right now. Do you remember the time we dipped you in tar and stuck you to the backside of an angry water buffalo? I'll be right there. Hey, Dave, one of my sheep fell too. Just a minute. <laughs> oh, my sheep fell over. Dave. Oh, Dave, after you pick up our sheep, could you run and get me a bite to eat? I'm famished. Oh, yeah, me too. Get me something, too. You know, sometimes I think I could eat a whole camel. Oh, yeah? Well, sometimes I think I could eat a whole spaceship. Uh, what's a spaceship? I have no idea. <laughs> That's how things had pretty much always been for Dave. Nothing really exciting happened around there until one day when their dad, Jesse, came running out with some uh, horrible uh, news. Uh, 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 Dave, can you pick those up? Oh, oh, boys! Oh, oh, boys! I got, I got horrible news! The villa just built the, the Philippines! And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, they're attacking! The lima beans are, uh, lacking? The nectarines are quacking? One more time, please, and let's work on our enunciation. The Philistines are attacking! Uh, Bob, what are the Philippines? The Philippines are a group of islands off the coast of Southeast Asia, but that's not important now. The Philistines were people who hated Israel. They wanted to take Israel's land and make the Israelites their slaves, so they'd have to do whatever the Philistines told them to do. Oh, that's bad. You're right. So the Israelites needed to protect themselves. We need to protect ourselves, but how? King Saul is putting together an army to stop the Philistines. He needs your help. You must help save Israel. We, we must help save Israel. save Israel. We must help save Israel. We must help save Israel. Hey, 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 Dave. Where do you think you're going? <laughs> it's very nice that you want to help, but saving a country is a big thing. You're a little guy. Big people do big things, and little people do little things. So, stay with the sheep. What? Oh, oh, can you believe that? You <laughs> They're big. I'm little. They go. I twiddle. Why can't little guys do 
big things too. By the time Dave's brothers arrived at King Saul's camp, battle lines had been drawn between the Philistines and the Israelites. And, as was the custom in their day, the armies lined up and yelled at each other. Hello, Israelites! You are thieves! And soon we will put apples in your mouths and stick you in our toaster ovens! <laughs> oh, yes, after we defeat you, you will be our slaves and you will have to fetch us our slippers! Yes, and iron our trousers! Oh, and wipe our little noses! Aha! Uh-huh. And scratch that spot on our backs we cannot reach no matter how hard we try! <laughs> Don't you have anything to say? Um, do you guys have any fried chicken? I've got a real hankering for fried chicken. Yeah, me too. This is going to be easier than we thought. You know, I think I can save us all a lot of time. How about if we bring out our strongest man, and you bring out your strongest man, and they will fight. If our champion beats your champion, you will be our slaves. But if your champion defeats us, we will be your slaves. What do you think about that? Well, the Israelites were getting kind of tired of the yelling, and the Philistines did seem a little on the small side, so King Saul agreed. That seems like a reasonable idea. All right, we agree. Send out your champion. Hey, Goliath! Who will I fight? The Israelites were so terrified of Goliath that they all ran away and hid. Mm, Nobody will fight. I'll come back tomorrow. And that's exactly what he did. Goliath came back the next day, and the next day, and the next day for 40 days. But every time he showed up, all the Israelites ran away and hid. Finally, Jesse started to worry about his boys, so he sent little Dave to the battlefield with some food. (coughs) Now Dave got to King Saul's camp just about the time Goliath was going to come out, so all the Israelites were hiding. Hello? Is anybody here? Shh, he'll hear you. Who? (coughs) Him, that big pickle over there. Who will fight me? Well, who's going to fight him? What are you, nuts? He'd have us for lunch. Speaking of which, what'd you bring us? Here you go. Mmm, pizza. Oh, cheese in the crust. That's tremendous. Come on, guys. Have you forgotten? We're the children of God. The what? The children of God. The Bible says that the Israelites were God's chosen people. God led them through the desert. He helped them walk across the Red Sea. And whenever they went into battle, God was there with them. They had always known that if God was on their side, no one could stand against them. Wow. But King Saul and his men were so scared of big, tall Goliath, they forgot that God was even bigger. Oh, dear. Uh, Larry... You've got something on your, uh... Huh? Oh, never mind. Once again, no one would answer Goliath's challenge. Oh, no one to fight. They told me that you are the children of God. You are cowards. I come back tomorrow. I can't believe you're letting him say that! Somebody's gotta do something! What are you going to do, Dave? Remember, you're a little guy. Leave this big stuff to us big people. (gasps) Do you think he saw me? No, you're okay. Phew. Well, Dave knew exactly what he had to do, so he went straight to King Saul and announced his plan. 
King Saul took the news rather well. I'm sorry, my ears must be failing. I could have sworn I heard you say that you'd fight Goliath. But you didn't say that, did you? Yes, I did. Oh, I say, that's very kind, but let's be reasonable. You are a tiny little fellow, and, well, Goliath, he's, he's enormous. No, 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 that's a job for a big person, not a little boy like you. You're not going to sing, are you? Couldn't you just play your harp and I'll throw things at you? Oh. You're big, I'm little. My head only comes to your middle. But I say little guys can do big things too. Oh, yes, but Goliath, he's... He's big, but God's bigger. And when I think of him, the twin figure. With his help, little guys can do big things too. Oh, I see what you're saying. Understand. Now let's suppose that this is true. You still look rather wimpy, but I know what we can do. Just step behind this curtain. It will only take a minute. There's a closet in the corner, and you'll like what I've got in it. You'll find my royal armor there. Now, Danny, put it on. Yes, now you'll look much bigger when the battle lines are drawn. Well, one more thing you'll need, I think. Pick up my royal sword. It's a big one and a beauty. The best we could afford. Once you've got it all together, I think you will agree. You're bound to do much better if you try to look like me. <laughs> Oh, dear. You know, I think maybe I should just be plain old me. Oh, yes. Well, I, I suppose. But have you seen Goliath? Why, he's, he's just... He's... He's big. But that's bigger. And I think I can just want to figure. With his help, little guys can do big things. With his help, I know I can do big things. With his help, little guys can do big things, too. Into. Oh dear. Well, Dave wasn't exactly sure what he was getting into, but he knew God would be there with him. So he went down to a stream and found five smooth stones. Then he went back to the camp and waited for Goliath. Who will fight me? I will fight you, Goliath. You know, if I didn't know better, I'd say that sounded like Dave. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if I didn't know better, I'd say that looks like Dave. Huh? huh? Dave? Goliath was equally surprised. Who said that? <clears throat> I did. Huh? Whoa, ho, ho. am I a dog that you come at me with sticks? <laughs> I don't exactly know what you mean, but you are not a dog. You are a really big guy that wants to beat me up. And I come at you not with sticks, but in the name of the God of Israel, who this day shall help me defeat you. We will see who defeats who. Now we fight. It's shut down! <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
so scared of Dave that they all ran away and hid, and Israel was saved. And that's the story of Dave, a really little guy who did a really big thing. Right. Now, those weren't their real names. No, their real names were, uh, let me see if I can get this right. Uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and, uh, Abednego. Eh, of course, nobody could remember those, so we took to calling them Rack, Shack, and Benny. Anyways, they came with a bunch of other boys and girls that Mr. Nezzer brought in to work at his chocolate factory. Well, who's Mr. Nezzer? Ah, we'll get to that later. Who am I? Why, I'm George. Anything that goes in or out of Nezzer chocolate gotta come by me. Well, speaking of which, it's almost 8 o'clock. Time for the morning milk delivery. Here comes Laura now. Well, she's my favorite. Good morning, George. How are you? I hope you're feeling fine. I'd love to stay and talk, but it's almost 8 o'clock and I haven't got... See you later! Because we work real hard at the chocolate factory. We start at 8 and we don't get lunch till 3. I gotta drive a truck to make a buck so I can send it home to my family. Well now, you are in trouble. Your time card is at wreck. It's almost two past eight. I'll tell Nezzer that you're late and he'll take it from your jack. Yes, Mr. Lunt. Oh, yes, we work real hard at the chocolate factory. Excuse me, Mr. Lunt, but I've got an injury. Now get back on the line. You'll be just fine. With all this work to do, we've got no time for sin with me. We used to be so happy. We used to laugh and run. Now there's no time to play, cause we gotta work all day. And it isn't very fun. I'm Rack. I'm Chad. I'm Benny. We work here in the plant. We'd like to take a break, for goodness sake. But Mr. Nazar says, you can't. <laughs> we all need a vacation. call him Mr. Nezzer. Now, Mr. Nezzer's not a bad man. He just gets confused sometimes. Why, his chocolate bunnies are selling so well, I, I think he's gotten a little big for his britches. And that's saying something, because his britches were pretty big to start out with. What's all this have to do with Rack, Shack, and Benny? Well, their troubles start when Mr. Nezzer makes a little announcement. Attention, little people! I have an announcement! This morning, Nezzer Chocolate shipped its two millionth chocolate bunny! To celebrate this momentous occasion, for the next 30 minutes, everyone may eat as many bunnies as they want! Bon appetit! Eh, hey, boss. 
That's awfully nice of you giving away all those bonnies. Oh, if I could just see the looks on their faces right now. Hey, guys. I don't think we should eat any more bunnies. Well, what do you mean? Mr. Nezzer said we could eat as many as we, we want. Well, don't you remember what our parents taught us? We shouldn't eat very much candy because it's not very good for us. Shaq, our parents aren't here now. We're on our own. Besides, everybody else is doing it. Rack, Benny, listen to me. I know our parents aren't here right now, but I keep thinking of a song my mom used to sing to me a long time ago. Think of me every day, hold tight to what I say, and I'll be close to you even from far away. Know that wherever you are, it is never too far, if you think of to help us do what's right. If we remember what they taught us, it's kind of like they are here. <laughs> okay, no more bunnies. I'm doing it for my mom. <laughs> Me too. Well, that about does it. What do you say we pop in and let them show their appreciation? Oh, yeah. They really gonna appreciate you, boss. Hello? Hmm. I don't feel very appreciated. Hey, look. They are lying on the floor like they're sick or something. Hmm? You mean I let them eat my bunnies and in return they all wanna play hooky? Wait, boss. Those three guys over there, they don't look sick. Oh? Hmm. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Nezzer, for your lovely gift of chocolate. Yeah, thanks! Everybody else is lying down, but you three are standing up. Actually, boss, I think the tomato is sitting. I'm standing. Sitting. Look, this is sitting, and this is standing. I'm standing. Okay, he's standing. What are your names, boys? I'm Shadrach. I'm Meshach. I'm a bumblebee, a Benny Boo. I'm Benny. We can use boys who know how to stand up here at Neza Chocolate. How would you like to be junior executives? What's it mean? It means you have to wear a tie. Sure, that'd be great. All righty, Mr. Lunt, get them their ties. Right away, boss. Boys, I want to see you in my office first thing in the morning. Yes, sir. Well, what do you know? Rack Shack and Benny did what they thought was right, even though nobody else was doing it. And it paid off. This time, anyway. But boy, were they in for a surprise when they got to Mr. Nezzer's office the next day. Boys, have I got a surprise for you. The other day, I was thinking about the Nezza chocolate bunny, thinking about how wonderful the bunny is, how beautiful the bunny is, and I thought to myself, I thought, oh, if only all my workers love the bunny as much as I do. I asked myself, why don't they love it as much? Do you know why? Because it's small. It's a little bunny. What they need is a bunny they can look up to, and I mean way up to. This is just a model. The real bunny is 90 feet high. My workers finished it this morning. Wow, that's a big bunny, sir. Mm-hmm. 
Since you're my junior executives, I wanted you to see it first. But this afternoon, everyone will meet the new bunny, and it's gonna be a beautiful thing when everybody bows down and sings the bunny song. Um, I don't think I'm familiar with that particular tune. Could you just hum a few bars? You know, I was hoping you'd ask. The bunny song is how all my employees will show just how much they love the bunny. How nothing is more important than the bunny. How they do anything for the bunny. And it goes something like this. The bunny, the bunny, whoa, I love the bunny. I don't love my soup or my bread, just the bunny. The bunny, the bunny, yeah, I love the bunny. I gave everything that I had for the bunny. I don't want no health food when it's time to feed. A big bag of bunnies is all that I need. I don't want nobody to come out and play. I'll sit on my sofa, eat bunnies all day. I won't eat no beans, and I won't eat tofu. That stuff is for sissies, but bunnies. Say, if someone didn't quite agree with everything in that song, so they didn't, um, didn't sing it, what would happen? What's that over there? That's the furnace. What's it for? Well, that's where the bad bunnies go. Let's just say, in my mind, if you don't bow down and sing the song, you're a bad bunny. You don't mean... But I'm sure that won't happen. It's almost time for the ceremony. I'll see you out there. Now this was a pickle. That bunny song was chock full of stuff they knew was wrong. But if they don't sing it, Neza says he's going to throw them in the furnace. Woo! Well, what would you do if you were them? I better hold that thought. The ceremony's starting. Thank you for attending today's festivities. It is with great pleasure that I present to you the object of our affection, your new best friend, the Bunny! Now it is time to bow and sing the Bunny Song! Hey, boss, those three guys don't look like they're bowing. Hmm? Aren't those our new junior executives? I think so. Maybe they're stuck. Let's find out. I said it's time to sing the bunny song. Sing the song. They ain't singing, boss. Sing! Think of me every day. Is that the bunny song? No, I don't think so. Are you crazy? That's the wrong song. Far away. Know that wherever you are, it is never too 
far If you think of me, I'll be with you <gasps> Oh, that was beautiful! I'm going to be singing that song myself. As I throw you into the furnace, God sees them. Take them to the furnace. Is everyone comfortable? Good. Rat, I can't move my arms. Ah, uh, Benny, you don't have any arms. Oh. I've tried to be patient. I've tried to be kind. Can you tell me what the trouble is? Am I losing my mind? No, I didn't ask for much. Just one simple little thing. Didn't ask you to part the waters. I just wanted to hear you sing. I gave you hats. I gave you ties. I let you eat my buddies. And this is how you But to show you what kind of guy I am, I'll ask you one more time. Will you or will you not sing the song? Well, you see, sir, our parents taught us to stand up for what we believe in. And God wants us to do what's right. And there's a lot of stuff in that song that's not right. So, we don't mean to be a bother. We hope you understand. But we cannot sing that song. I understand, boys. You do? Oh, yes. I understand that you're bad buddies! Now, if I'm not mistaken, that truck belongs to me, Mr. Lunt. Oh, but look, my truck seems to be full of garbage. Mr. Lunt, is there anything you can do about that? Hey, no problem, boss. Yeah. I sure hope that you were right. Huh? Mr. Lunt? It wasn't me, boss. I said, nobody bakes my buddies. Listen here, young lady. If you don't plug that back in, you're gonna be in big trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's ever gonna stand up to me again!
try to make you do things you weren't supposed to do. What was I thinking? I must have forgot everything that my mommy taught me. Can you ever forgive me? We forgive you. Oh, thanks. Is there anything I can do to make it up to you? Well, you can sing one of our songs. Well, how's it go? You know, I was hoping you'd ask. That's why she tells me what I need to know. I got a lot of respect for that woman. But sometimes when I'm playing with a buddy or two, they're doing things that no, I'm not supposed to do. Do you go along? Even though the things they do are wrong. Mm -hmm. I remember saying, Stand up, stand up. For what you believe in, believe in, believe in God. He's the one to back you up. What you learned in church and Sunday school Just check it out mm -hmm. The Bible tells us what it's all about Oh, you know that's right So if you have a question, go ask your dad And he can tell you if the thing is good or bad You'll make their day Uh-huh If you remember what your parents say What they say They told us Stand, stand up, stand up For what you believe The one to back you up. We'll stand with you. Oh, stand, stand up, stand up. For what you believe in, believe in, believe in God. He's the one to back you up. Got a beat. 